Hey, Bert. Tim Sanborn here. Quick question for you. To whom could I reach out for updates on a couple of North Mecklenburg County Greenway projects? Uh, if you want to reach out to me, um, I can. I'll get back to you tomorrow about it. Okay. Lower McDowell Creek and uh, Clark Creek. Thanks. Yep. Yep. All right. I think we are ready to get started. Uh, um, I'm going to turn it over to uh, County Manager Dina DiOrio. Thank you, Bert, and thank you to everyone who is joining us tonight for this uh, for this public session. Um, you know, we have heard a lot from a lot of people about this project, and so we really look forward to this opportunity uh, to present some information to you um, and to get feedback about where we are and and uh, how we move forward from here. Um, we've heard a lot uh, from both sides. There are people who support the project. There are people who don't, and uh, we've taken that feedback and we've put together some. I think some interesting opportunities for people to take a look at. And again, we look forward to hearing from, from everybody about this. And normally we wouldn't have a public meeting this early on in a project. Uh, normally we would be a lot further down the road before we'd actually have um, a public session. But because of the feedback that we've been hearing um, about the project, we're doing it much more, uh, much earlier in the process than we normally would. So again, want to make sure that we hear everybody's views on this. I also wanted to point out that we're joined tonight by uh, Commissioner Lee Altman, who is a county commissioner at large, as well as Commissioner Laura Meyer, who is the District 5 uh, County Commissioner Representative. So we want to thank them for being here as well. Um, and we'll appreciate to hear their feedback as we move through this process. So with that, I will turn it back over to Bert uh, to kick us off with our presentation. Thanks, Bert. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us this evening for uh, our public information session on McAlpine Creek Greenway from Greenway to Johnston Road. Uh, my name is Bert Lynn. I'm the Capital Planning Division Director for Park and Recreation here in Mecklenburg County. Uh, also with us this evening uh, is W. Lee Jones, Director of Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation. Um, Good evening. I'm joined by a few folks on my Capital Planning team, Katie Lloyd, Senior Planner, uh, Katie Daughtry, Planner, and Darnika Waters planner. Um, we'll also hear uh, from David Malcolm, who is a project manager with McAdams and serving as the design consultant for this project in a few minutes. Um, tonight, we'd like to share some information about our Greenway system as a whole, uh, give a brief project history on this particular project, review an initial alignment study along with some alternate routes that we've kind of worked up over the uh, last several months, and then um, answer your questions and give you an opportunity to uh, provide some feedback. I do wanna let everybody know that we are recording tonight's meeting. So we'll post the link to the video as well as a PDF of the slides from the presentation to the public input website, which is uh, a site we'll add the link in the chat here in a few minutes. It's also the site that you use to sign up uh, for this meeting. So before we get started, I wanted to walk you through some of the features of our virtual meeting platform. Uh, it's important that everyone stays mute throughout the formal presentation. Uh, you'll notice a button on the bottom left of your screen. Make sure there's a red slash through the microphone there. Um, uh, we will have an opportunity to ask questions at the end, either by unmuting or using the chat feature. So if you do have questions or comments, uh, throughout the presentation, we ask that you use the chat function. There's a button on the bottom of your screen that will, uh, that's labeled chat, that will bring up a chat box. Um, so let's test that feature out right now. Uh, please type in uh, your name, your zip code, and your favorite place to walk or bike here within the county. And we will watch the chats roll in. We've already had a question. Yes, we are recording the presentation and we will post the link um, probably tomorrow on our uh, public input page. All right, here we go. We've got chats rolling in like crazy.
So we anticipate uh, a number of attendees tonight. We've already got 101 participants, which in the six months that we've been hosting virtual public meetings um, is, is more than we've had uh, in any other meeting. Um, so we request that you sign up to speak if you'd like to speak at the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll answer as many questions as we can tonight in the two hours that we have for the meeting. Uh, if we're unable to get to some of the, the questions, then we will answer those questions. We'll post those on our public input website. If you'd like to speak at the end of the presentation, please let us know by um, posting something in the chat, letting Katie Lloyd know there, or you can text Katie Lloyd. The number's on the bottom of the screen here. We will have that posted toward the end of the presentation when it's closer to the Q&A portion. Um, her number is 980-266-0691. Because we have so many folks on the meeting tonight, we'll limit speaking time to two minutes per person. All right. So let's begin with an overview of greenways and greenway trails. Uh, greenways are strips of undeveloped land near urban areas set aside for recreational use and environmental protection. We build greenway trails to activate this land as linear parks that connect people and places by linking neighborhoods, offices, parks, schools, and shopping areas. These trails provide alternate ways to move through our city, suburbs, and small towns and allow for transportation and for recreation. Paved walking and bike trails are the number one requested amenity by the residents of Mecklenburg County. According to citizen surveys completed as part of our previous master plan in 2015 and our current master plan uh, update that's going on, uh, has been going on over the last year or so. Our current Greenway master plan calls for over 300 miles of Greenway trails along creeks and streams and 200 miles of urban trails along roadways and through urban areas. Currently, more than 56 miles of greenway trails are completed with the goal to add 30 miles of new trail by the end of the year 2023. To accomplish that goal and to meet community demand, we and our partners are working on an accelerated greenway plan that includes over 40 miles of trail currently in design or under construction. This map shows the locations of the Greenway projects we are working on through the accelerated Greenway plan. The blue dots indicate projects which are funded through our five-year capital improvement plan. The magenta dots represent the five new projects that were funded last year to meet community demand and increase access to our trail network. Planning for this particular section of Greenway began in 2012 with an application for NCDOT grant funding to offset construction costs associated with the project. Active planning on this project began in late 2018 or early 2019, and our focus to date has been primarily on um, initial trail route studies, site surveying, and addressing land acquisition needs. McAlpine Creek Greenway, shown on this map in orange, was funded through the, cap the county's capital improvement plan in conjunction with the grant from the NCDOT. The project ties into existing Lower McAlpine, Four Mile, and McMullen Creek Greenway systems with connections over to Little Sugar Creek Greenway, also known by some as the Cross Charlotte Trail. The black line shown uh, on this map are existing trails. The red line indicates trails under construction and the dashed line shows future trails that are currently unfunded. So with that, I'm gonna turn things over to David Malcolm with McAdams to run us through our initial Greenway study. Thank you very much, uh, Bert. <clears throat> it's a pleasure to be here. Again, my name is David Malcolm. I'm a landscape architect and project manager uh, working on the design for this segment, which we will be reviewing tonight. I do also want to mention that Iona Thomas, her Greenways practice lead is here, as well as Graham Bruns, who is our Greenway engineer. 
uh, if any technical questions come up. Uh, I live here in Mecklenburg County, right across the street from Four Mile Creek Greenway, which I use regularly. Avid uh, Greenway's user myself. Um, this trail is very similar to that one, and in that it runs along a creek and in and out of a floodplain. Before we dive deep into the alignment discussion, I did want to point out, and this is a good introduction to how we make the decisions to put a trail where it ultimately gets placed. If you've ever been on one of the trails, Greenway trails in Mecklenburg County, what you may not know is that there are many, many decisions that are made on where that trail is placed. Um, they're not just randomly placed. Um, there, in fact, are a lot of drivers that ultimately make that decision. Um, just like this project, things like accessibility, um, you know, how do people get access to the trail? And is the trail accessible for all users, walkers, bicyclists, various age groups? Uh, things like environmental concerns or constructability, uh, which means, you know, various things such as, is it possible to build the trail? Uh, you know, how do you bring in construction equipment? Or in sensitive areas, how do you perhaps use top-down construction uh, to minimize impacts? You know, th look, things like floodplain impacts, and we'll talk more about the floodplain in a minute. Uh, topography, topography, the slopes in which you're working. Of course, transportation comes into play. How do you connect to existing sidewalk networks as well as um, streets? Um, how do you ultimately connect this piece of the Greenway system to a broader system that provides alternative transportation? Um, you know, all of these things matter. Maintenance, safety, of course, utilities, cost, of course, is a big one. Um, there's lots of things that drive costs and different construction methodologies have a big impact. And of course, public input. Here's a great example tonight uh, where we want to listen to all the concerns and uh, make sure that we're factoring that into the alignment decisions as well. User experience and then property, you know, whether or not this is on public property or private property, uh, are easements required, all of these things and more go into the ultimate determination for where an alignment gets placed. Um, next slide. So here we are. Uh, before we talk about the alignment in detail, let's just get oriented a moment. Um, this map has been, has been rotated just a little bit off of north-south, just so we can fit everything on the screen. Uh, but I do want to point out that the yellow lines that you see in front of you on this map are the proposed Greenway trails. And those lines are essentially running north and south. Okay, so um, just keep that in mind as we're looking at these maps. I also want to point out the, the central roadway right in the middle of the map. That is Pineville Matthews Road right in the middle there. Um, also, I want to point out Johnston Road all the way on the Bottom left-hand side of the map, you can see the arrow moving there. That's Johnston Road. And then I'm gonna to go to the other end of the map and point to Green Ray Road. Um, those are some, some key roadways that we'll be talking about. And then of course, um, um, or we'll also highlight the creek itself. You'll see McAlpine Creek there uh, in blue as it um, we parallel the creek with this trail alignment. Uh, two other areas to point out, um, this trail is very close to McAlpine Elementary School, as well as Charlotte Country Day School. Okay, so this portion of McAlpine Creek Greenway, again shown in yellow, will connect to the existing McAlpine and Four Mile Creek Greenway trails at Johnston Road, um, shown in black at the bottom left of this map. Okay, this grouping of existing trails is also referred to as McMullen or McAlpine or, and or uh, Lower McAlpine. All of this grouping of trails are existing and we are extending our trail from that, um, that area. Also note the, the P with the dot there, that is an existing parking lot trailhead at Johnston Road. So if you've ever driven or parked there, it's a way to access the trails. Um, the trail will proceed north along the creek on the north, or excuse me, on the western side 
as you leave that trailhead there at Johnston Road, you will go underneath Highway 51. Um, you will then circle back around and go over McAlpine Creek, and then you will continue to proceed north along the east side of the creek up to Green Ray Road and cross back over the creek once again and terminate there. Um, again, on this overview, you can see that we're studying connections to the Bannington Road neighborhoods. Um, also, we have a few connections to bring you up to the sidewalk network at Pineville Matthews Road. We are looking at a connection to Rayfield Drive and then also Ryder Avenue. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now we're zooming in a bit here into the first half of the project. Again, we'll get you oriented. You see uh, Johnston Road there on the lower left-hand side of your screen. And then you also see Pineville Matthews Road um, bisecting through the map as well. Um, this first half is about three quarters of a mile from the parking lot at Johnston Road to Pineville Matthews Road. So that's about three quarters of a mile. If you were visiting this trail segment and you wanted to park your car and get out and walk, you would park at the existing Johnston Road trail access where there are about 36 parking spaces. Much of the trail between this point and Pineville Matthews Road will likely be constructed as boardwalk in order to limit impacts to the existing wetlands that are found in and around that creek area. An access trail is also being studied to connect up to the existing neighborhoods along Bannington Road. And you see that Y-line connection connecting right to Bannington. Okay, next slide. Okay, so now we are zooming into the upper half of this project, the more Northern half. Uh, again, getting you uh, oriented on the left-hand side of your screen, you're just seeing a bit of Pineville Matthews Road or Highway 51 on the left. And then on the right, you see Green Ray Road. Those are two important uh, markers to note as we're talking about this. So as we mentioned before, the plan is to go underneath Pineville Matthews Road. We're gonna go right underneath the road. There's an existing bridge there. We have room to move the trail underneath that. We're gonna loop up and over McAlpine Creek, just north of the existing roadway bridge. This loop is going to be a unique feature of the Greenway system. Just like a clover leaf of a highway, you will circle underneath a bridge and then you will begin to rise in elevation. And then you'll circle around and then connect to the bridge, a new bridge, a new pedestrian bridge, which will go over McAlpine Creek. On the east side of the bridge is also where we plan to construct a new trailhead parking lot that will have capacity for 40 to 50 spaces. The current design is showing 46 parking spaces. So combine this parking lot with the lot at Johnston Road and there are 82 spaces between the two lots. Additional connections are being studied to Ryder Avenue, Ray, uh, Rayfield Drive, and to the sidewalks along Pineville Matthews Road. The current goal of the project is to continue the system north approximately three quarters of a mile, at which point we would cross back over McAlpine Creek and end at Green Ray Road. And there's a longer term goal to use the Green Ray Road connection as an urban, or the sidewalks there as an urban trail connection up to Carmel Road. Okay, and next slide. So what you're seeing here are three photos of existing trailheads that are in the county. Um, there is a trailhead that you see there in the middle photograph. That is the existing Johnston Road trailhead that we've been talking about. Trailheads often contain uh, parking and restroom facilities. The trailhead at Johnston will contain a rest or does contain a restroom building. Oftentimes you'll see a maintenance outpost and even a small playground at trailheads. The trailhead that we have designed or preliminarily designed for Pineville Matthews Road, again, has 46 parking spaces. It's a flat 
level area where you can park your car and safely get out and access the trail. And it will not have a restroom uh, just due to some of the uh, floodplain in, uh, potential in that area. Next slide. Here you see a photo of an existing pedestrian bridge. Um, this is a typical bridge used in the county. These are often pre-manufactured bridges designed to uh, be in um, environments like crossing creeks um, and they're steel. They have a uh, non-skid surfacing and handrails and a safe way to cross creeks. Okay, here's an example of um, how we will get underneath Highway 51. We mentioned that the trail is going to go underneath the existing uh, bridge, vehicular bridge at Pineville Matthews Road, Highway 51. And this is very similar to how we would also gain access. As you can see, there is a retaining wall to help hold and stabilize the slope on the right-hand side. Uh, there's plenty of width for multiple users to pass at the same time. And then of course, a uh, safety railing on the left-hand side to prevent um, or to have a place uh, to use for handrail and guardrail. Okay, here you see an example of the boardwalk. There are um, sections of this trail that are going to have boardwalk. This is um, a newer style of boardwalk. If you've uh, been at the existing trails, which we talked about before at Four Mile and McMullen, those are lower to the ground. This is a, a newer system that um, will elevate a bit, a bit higher and have handrails, but it'll also have a non-slip surface uh, we're looking at alternatives, including this one, which contains a concrete surfacing and it's very durable uh, and safe to use. And then here you see some standard greenway signage. This is similar to the signage that will be used at this trail that we are working on. You'll see this throughout the county's greenway system. Uh, very nice, uh, well um, designed, easy to read wayfinding signage, um, as well as directional information to help you in your wayfinding and know exactly where you are as you're using the trail system. All right, thank you, David. Um, let's see, there we go. Um, so uh, Dina mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, we, we we're meeting a little sooner than we typically do on uh, on our projects because of the amount of, of uh, input and feedback that we've gotten over the last, I'd say, five or six months or so. Um, we did have to get to a certain point within the design before we had any public engagement, though. Some of the details that David just went through on the initial alignment study um, prove that we need to make sure that the proposed alignment works uh, and the access points can be built. So from a constructability standpoint, we don't want to show anything that we physically can't do. Uh, but uh, in this case, we are absolutely early enough in design to be able to address concerns and make revisions to the proposed alignment and the access point based on questions and concerns that we hear from the residents. Uh, typically at this point in the project, um, we're able to share some very specific information about project schedule. However, several factors on this project make it difficult to share those specifics tonight. And so that's something we'll have to do uh, later in, in, in the year, probably in spring of 21, hopefully. Uh, we're still actively negotiating se several easements in order to construct the project. This project or this process takes time. We do not yet know when the negotiations will be finalized and completed. Uh, the second delay here is related to the project's funding from the state. So while NCDOT grants for the construction typically add time to a project during the design of a project, 2020 has been even more challenging uh, of a year for this process. Due to budget shortfalls, NCDOT froze their spending. So we do not yet know when we will be able to or be approved to begin construction with this grant. However, the quicker that we're able to finalize real estate acquisitions and complete the design will help move our schedule up. So due to some of the uncertainty around the land acquisition process, 
uh, required to make the connection to Green Ray Road and some of the input that we've received from the nearby residents, we've developed a few alternative alignments for the northeastern portion of the project. So the first that we have here would reduce the scope of the project by about seven tenths of a mile and end the project at the magenta dot at the proposed parking lot on Pineville Matthews Road. So this would retain the connections that David shared a few minutes ago to the neighborhoods to the north of this area to the south and along 51, but wouldn't extend beyond there. So that's one alternate that we're looking at. The second alternative, which some residents have asked about, continues the trail along McAlpine Creek and has it ending on the south side of the creek without connecting to Green Ray Road. And this would take advantage of some property that the county currently owns kind of down in this area. Um, this would add additional trail mileage to the scope of the project and to our greenway system as a whole. However, it wouldn't provide additional points of access to the trail. Our experience on previous greenway trails has been that trails don't provide, that don't provide a connection like this one are typically underutilized. So the third and final alternative that's been studied would create a loop trail within the city's tree safe property behind the Shadow Lake neighborhood. And so that's shown here in magenta. This would provide more greenway mileage and provide a walking loop kind of within this area. So you could kind of walk a loop right there. And uh, walking loops are pretty popular in our parks. So if we proceed with this option, uh, there would need to be some further study of constructability for the bridge, um, the additional bridge that would be required here, and then the trail within this area. There's some wetlands that's associated kind of right along the floodplain in that area. So those are three of the alternates that we are, are currently looking into as well. So we have already received a lot of comments um, via email, via phone, uh, and on our public input website. So these are some of the comments that we've received to date on the website. Um, definitely not all of them. I checked this, I checked today at noon. Uh, and at that time we had about 54 comments to date just on the public input website. Uh, I have not gone back and, and counted the emails that we have, but there's a considerable number of those. Some of the comments as you see are supportive of the project while others are concerned about potential impacts on the neighborhoods adjacent to the project. So we've had a number of questions regarding potential parking on public streets, particularly on Green Ray Road. Um, we don't typically encourage parking at neighborhood entrances in an effort to reduce traffic and congestion within the neighborhoods adjacent to our Greenway trails. We will construct a new parking lot, as David mentioned earlier, along Highway 51 for those who need to drive and park to access the Greenway Trail. This parking lot will be in addition to the other parking lot on Johnston Road, and then the other three parking lots that currently serve that system of, of McMullen, McAlpine, and Four Mile Creek Greenways. Um, we've got over 200 current access points to our 56 plus miles of Greenway, and we've had very few issues uh, reported of on-street parking. However, uh, every, every place that we work and every road that we deal with is unique. Uh, we do understand that the road width and the current traffic volumes along Green Ray Road are and do present a unique situation. We've had meetings with Charlotte Department of Transportation to discuss potential approaches to addressing concerns if and when this con uh, connection to Green Ray Road is constructed. An initial idea would be to extend the double yellow line to the end of Green Ray Road. And if problems are observed with parking in the area, erecting no parking signs along that section of the road. We've received a few questions about Greenway trails and crime. Um, our experience has been that crime within our parks and greenways are reflective of that of the surrounding neighborhoods. We haven't seen greenway trails create more or reduce the amount of, of, of incidents 
um, after they're complete. The majority of crime related issues that we have associated with our greenway trails are larceny from vehicles at our public parking lot areas. Um, and we always, uh, within our trail signage at our trailheads, encourage trail users to lock their vehicles. Sometimes they're not locked and to, uh, to leave valuables at home or at least hide them if possible. We typically do not light our greenway trails. Um, lighting is currently cost prohibitive as we're building these trails, building our system out. But more importantly, it's very challenging to provide lighting uh, down in the floodplain. We've done it in, in very few circumstances, uh, but typically we don't do that. However, we have begun to install security cameras at our Greenway trailheads and parking areas where we've had reoccurring issues with larceny from vehicles. Um, greenways are no different than anywhere else. If you have an emergency, we ask you to call 911. Uh, in terms of, of activity on our greenways or policing our greenways, CMPD bicycle and occasionally motorbikes uh, officers are on our greenways along with our Mecklenburg County Park and Recreation uh, Park Rangers, our internal maintenance staff, and our maintenance contractors. Finally, we've received some questions about how greenway trails impact floodplains. Any construction project, greenway trails included, are required to obtain a floodway development permit. This process requires the county to develop a floodplain model to demonstrate the project will not negatively impact the floodplain and, and uh, change the elevation of floodwaters during major storm events. Since this project is partially funded by an NCDOT grant, we will have to provide additional information to state and federal agencies in the form of an environmental assessment for the site, which identifies any endangered and protected species that might be in, uh, impacted by the project, as well as any, any cultural heritage items. Uh, with any project, this one included, uh, we coordinate with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers when we have uh, stream crossings, bridges, or wetlands that will be moving around uh, adjacent to or through with boardwalks. All right, so this concludes the formal presentation for the evening. Um, so I think we'll spend the next little while uh, addressing questions that we've received through the chat window. And then once we work our way through those, we will work our way down the list of residents who have signed up to speak. Uh, again, we ask that you limit your comments to no more than, than two minutes. Um, so everybody has an opportunity and we'll keep the time in the background so we make sure that we keep the meeting moving forward. So with that, um, Katie, do we have any questions to address yet? I'm gonna guess we do because I've seen the chat window uh, moving pretty quickly. Yes. All right, we've got some questions that came in throughout the meeting. Okay, so uh, one of the first ones was actually answered um, in the chat, but there was a question about the ratings at the beginning. Um, and asked if that was just for park and rec desires. And Katie did answer that, that the, the ratings were specific to the park and rec master plan. Um, the next question actually came in text. Um, if country day school does not allow an easement for the green ray entrance, will the county take the property by eminent domain? So that's a question we get fairly often. Um, it's, it's something that we use uh, very infrequently from a greenway perspective. Um, Ultimately, the decision um, to, to utilize eminent domain or, or condemnation um, lies with the, uh, with the Board of County Commissioners. And so if that were to occur, um, that would have to be approved by the board. Um, so I think that, I mean, that's, that's how we do it. Um, I don't wanna speak for the board uh, in any more specifics than that. Okay, uh, next question also came through text. 
um, and I'm, I'm just reading them out. Why would the county impose an entrance on the Green Ray Road neighborhood that does not wish to have access to the trail? 124 of 125 families petitioned said they do not want the Greenway here. The problems of traffic and safety are enormous. Yep, and that's exactly why we're having the meeting tonight. Um, we are not, we, we don't have our minds made up. We had our, uh, our initial scope of the project to connect up to Green Ray Road and try to create as many connections to existing neighborhoods as possible. Um, but if we continue to have overwhelming uh, opposition to a, a, an access in that point, um, that is definitely going to uh, help inform uh, the scope of the project and, and, and where we move forward from here. All right, thanks. Um, so the next one I think is for David. Um, will the Highway 51 parking lot fit outside of the floodplain area? So we're still studying that parking lot. There is floodplain that um, if you drive by there today and you are at that Highway 51 area and you look to your to the north, um, you'll notice a, a graded out area underneath the power line easements and, and floodplain does move through that area. Um, and again, we're, we're studying the full impacts, but a portion of it uh, or portions of it uh, could uh, end up in the floodplain and that would obviously have to be considered um, uh, along with um, Bert's explanation of how we would get such development uh, regulated within the, or permitted within the floodplain. We'd ultimately have to get a floodplain permit and permission to do so. So several, several regulatory items we'd have to check to, to make that feasible. Um, David, while you're on too, there, there was a number of questions um, you, may, you mentioned about the, the sidewalks along Green Ray. Um, can you speak to um, what would be involved in, in, in filling those sidewalk gaps and how that could impact um, front yards of some of the residents on Green Ray generally? Uh, yeah, the area I'm familiar with uh, would be some existing sidewalks uh, that are on the school side of Green Ray Road, and we would um, come in and uh, make, you know, a, a essentially a transition from green uh, Greenway Trail surfacing such as asphalt, transition that to a narrower cross section, which would ultimately tie into the existing sidewalk connection and up and alongside the school. Uh, beyond that. Um, you know, our, our team hasn't studied that um, further, um, but um, we know within that area that we were just discussing and looking at, there would have to be some minor sidewalks, crosswalks and other improvements such as ramping to make that accessible. Thank you. And then there was another question um, that was kind of answered in the chat and it was, it was asking if Shadow Lake was represented on the call. Um, and someone from Shadow Lake, who's on the board actually um, spoke up. And I think there are a couple of people um, from Shadow Lake here. Um, so the next question is, um, and this is, uh, why would you proceed with extending the trail to Green Ray Road when there is uncertainty as to land acquisition with Country Day and Carmel Country Club? In the event you're unable to utilize Carmel Country, uh, then Green Ray becomes more than a neighborhood access point. Um, Bert, this is similar to some of the questions earlier, but do you want to add anything to that? Um, just that if, if we think from a, a broader context standpoint and we were able to connect to Green Ray and then add sidewalks up to Carmel um, in, in terms of, of bypassing and, and continuing kind of beyond the country club without moving through the country club, um, if we were able to go up Green Ray, we get to Carmel, we're only on Carmel for a very short amount of time before we'd be able to go back into to, um, lower speed, lower volume neighborhood roads um, to kind of move around the country club if we want to get over to where uh, a future phase of the Greenway would be uh, up at Colony Road there. Okay, um, the next one is, you claim that trail access has created few traffic areas. Have you conducted any impact traffic study with regard to the Greenway Road access? We have not. Uh, no, it's, it's atypical for us to do any kind of a, um, a traffic study 
on a greenway uh, project. And I'll, I'll let David think a little bit through that. We haven't done one that I'm aware of um, within Mecklenburg County. Uh, I know we've had some other projects, uh, not necessarily greenway projects, but kind of built projects like nature centers and recreation centers that have asked about traffic impact studies. Um, and the, the city doesn't require one unless you have an anticipated um, volume of 2,500 cars uh, a day, which uh, would have to be a, a much larger um, development than anything that we'd be doing uh, in terms of the Greenway. David, can you think of any incidents where you guys have done that? Never. Uh, it's never come up to my knowledge. Um, and I would just, yeah, I think you answered it well. And there's a trigger for traffic studies and we're, no, we're nowhere near the daily users or numbers of trips that would uh, require a traffic study in the county. Yeah, I agree, Bert. We've done these projects all over the state and we, it's just not the trip generator that usually um, would require that kind of traffic analysis. And so we, we've never been in a situation where we were anywhere close to that. Okay, um, and y'all bear with me. A lot of chats are coming in as I'm adding them to my document. So I'm trying to get through all these. And then once I get through the chat questions, then we'll open it up. I have a few people who texted to speak. Um, so the next question is, if I understand David correctly, you are officially abandoning the current master plan. Um, and this is a question for Bert. The current master plan that shows the path extending toward Carmel Country Club and planning to go off Creek up Green Ray. Um, this would make Green Ray the most accessible Greenway access for 10 to 15,000 people, but with no parking. Uh, no, I, 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 don't, I don't think we're abandoning um, any future Greenway segments here um, through the Country Club or, or anywhere else. Um, I think we're, we're trying to focus tonight on um, this particular project from uh, this portion of McAlpine Creek Greenway. Okay, uh, the next question is, is how large an area was invited to the meeting? And I'll actually answer this one. Um, it was uh, over a thousand postcards went out, um, which is basically, you know, from Johnston up to Carmel, all along Green Ray, and um, the some of the neighborhoods on both sides of the creek from that. Um, it's kind of an organic area, but over a thousand invites went out via snail mail, and then um, additional invites went out via, um, via email. And as I'm copying these, this is a comment. The original plan to connect to Green Ray looks good to me. And then the next question is, is there any evidence to support a Green Ray Road resident's assertion that traffic and safety problems are enormous? I have not seen any facts to support this claim. Um, I would say the, the unique situation that I mentioned earlier uh, in, in that there is a, um, a middle school that's at the end of a, a, a road that kind of ends, it doesn't move all the way through. Uh, and that, that does generate a tremendous amount of traffic um, in the mornings and the afternoons. So twice daily in a, in a typical, um, typical school year, typical school day. And even now with, uh, I, I think they've got reduced numbers of students kind of reporting to campus each day. Um, you know, we've been out and, and we've had other folks kind of within the county out meeting with residents at the time and notice kind of higher volumes of traffic through that area. As the head of school, I'm certainly happy to speak to that if you'd like. And I don't wanna just jump in with questions, but if you guys would like me to speak to that, I'm certainly happy to. If not, I certainly will, will yield to the comments that are they're going. Yeah, yeah, I think if we've got some time at the end, we'd absolutely love for you to speak. Perfect. All right, um, continuing on through some of the question, um, what's the best idea of the timeline for the decision to be made on design and then the greenway to be finished? <laughs> a great question. I would say that probably within the next two to three months, we'll, we'll determine um, how we're gonna move forward on the project. Um, and I, I had a, a phone conversation with a, a resident uh, earlier today uh, and they asked the exact same question and um, we'll continue to provide uh, in, uh, updates on the project through the public input uh, website and continue to gather comments through there. 
but I would imagine for this particular project, because we were meeting so early and there's still some 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 uh, uncertainty as to the exact scope of the project, that we would follow up with a, a secondary public meeting sometime uh, later in the spring or maybe early summer next year. Hopefully by that time as well, we'll have some kind of an idea of, of when we're going to be able to move forward from a construction standpoint uh, in terms of funding from NCDOT. Okay. Um, there's another question about um, the, the lack of neighborhood support. Um, it's correct me if I'm wrong, but 99.2% of homes do not desire this access point, specifically speaking to Green Ray. Um, what more needs to be done in order to continue to support the lack of interest um, for having Green Ray? And I think that's related to a question Bert answered about the community meeting. Um, yeah, I would, not say, I would say today we've, we've heard you loud and clear. And then I think there's some additional back and forth and I'm reading this as I go, so bear with me. Additional back and forth related to the question of, of country day um, traffic on the roadway. Um, there is one comment about um, connections to public roads like Green Ray are critical and important and supported by most taxpayers in the area. Um, another comment, I'm supportive of this effort to construct the full extension of the trail. Other neighborhoods like Stonehaven have lack of parking options and people have not parked on the neighborhood streets. They use the parking um, nearby at Boyce Park and at two other parking Greenway lots. Um, somebody asked uh, Bert to show the three alternatives um, to the Greenway connection. Can you just scroll through, through those again? Sure, let me, uh, let me cycle back a little. Yep. So um, the first alternate that we looked at just um, ends the trail at the uh, at the proposed uh, trailhead and parking area along Highway 51. It would keep intact those access points that that we envision to the neighborhoods to the north and south of that area uh, and to the, the sidewalks uh, along 51, one of which is is almost completed construction. Um, they've been working for the last several months. Uh, to complete uh, the sidewalk on the north side of uh, Highway 51 from the creek here over to Ray Road. The second alternate was to continue the trail um, on the east side of the creek, but rather than moving and in, in bridging over to connect the green ray, we would just create a small loop kind of at the end where users would come back here. And then the third that we looked at was um, was moving uh, on the east side and then uh, bridging back across to property that the city currently owns here and then looping that back around to that proposed access trail at Ryder Avenue. Thank you, Bert. Um, this next question I think is for David. Um, is there an alternate alternate regarding rider. This is deep within a neighborhood and there are no sidewalks. Maybe if we can bring that map up for context for those who need a visual. Does this work or you want the one that zoomed in a little bit? Yeah, so I think, oh, yeah, go back. Oh, that's good. That one works just fine. Yeah. So we did look, um, you know, this was this was an important connection, obviously, get, gaining access to Ryder uh, due to the configuration of Ryder and how its terminus end uh, is open there. Uh, we have access to the end of that road, uh, which facilitates a very easy connection, a smooth connection there from that street and onto the Greenway system. Uh, due to the proximity of, let's call it our uh, trail clover leaf, if you will, the loop, um, we can easily pull a, what we call a Y line or a trail connection off and make that connection to rider. Um, the, the benefit again of doing that is that entire neighborhood then is afforded a safe connection to the Greenway system. Um, so many homes in that area. And so I think that's um, why it was a, a very easy and logical way to, to extend and make a, a neighborhood connection in that direction. 
Yeah, and I'll add, we have made connections into neighborhoods that don't have sidewalks before. Um, and I, I'm unaware of any major issues that we've had there. Um, these streets are, are lower speed streets, lower volume streets from a vehicle standpoint. Um, actually, the street that I live on um, doesn't have sidewalks and people, particularly over the last nine months, have been walking um, quite a bit um, along, uh, along the streets there uh, fairly, fairly safe, safely. I, I would say if we weren't able to make that connection or didn't make that connection, the, the only way to get around to the Greenway would be, you know, if you hike through the woods or uh, you'd have to go out to Carmel down to 51 and then back to get on that way. Okay, um, moving on, there's some additional back and forth with some of the, um, the people on the meeting regarding um, some of the traffic and the existing traffic on Greenway Road. Sure. Um, indicating that it is the street is narrow and a, and a single parked car turns the street into a single lane road. Um, another comment um, that said this is it sounds like a good way around um, Carmel Country Club and to connect further to the east. Um, so an, another comment is access to Greenway allows access to the Carmel Road corridor and eventually bike corridor like Colony Road. Um, some additional back and forth uh, about the um, Greenway Road, um, someone, which I really like this, it, Greenway sounds too much like Greenway to not happen, um, which is true because I always mess it up when I say it and I confuse the two constantly. Um, um, da -da -da. So, okay, so here's another one. Um, from where does the Greenway um, Coalition, this goes back to the facts, um, derive its numbers of cars and days impacting the neighborhood? Um, and this is again some back and forth and, and we can get to that later when um, if the, the school traffic specifically we want to talk about that. Um, okay. Do we want to give uh, the folks who have uh, who have signed up to speak a few minutes? Yes, that would be great. I got a couple people that texted me. Sure. Um, so we'll start with um, the first one was Eric uh, Zavril. I'm here. Thank you. Go right ahead. Um, thank you. I'm representing Sustain Charlotte as their bike walk program coordinator. And, uh, you know, we advocate throughout the uh, city and the county for uh, transportation choices and smart growth. And we cannot stress the importance of having connections uh, with our greenways. They provide, uh, provide all of us safe transportation choices. They connect us to nature. They improve both their mental and physical health. And especially for kids, given that a school is nearby, so making these connection just to me makes sense uh, to provide that, that uh, choice to get around other than driving. Uh, parking and, and traffic on neighborhood streets uh, shouldn't dictate how we build our greenways. Uh, we already spend so many resources to store and move our cars as it is to set this precedent of, of a perceived threat of increased, tra increased traffic and parking is not something we need to start in Charlotte. Uh, the solution to stop vehicles and driving and parking in our neighborhoods can't be blocking greenway connections. Um, and just to, you know, just let, you're not making the decision just for yourself in the neighborhood, but also future residents who may move into the neighborhood or their connections to the community uh, that's up the road from yours. Uh, it's it's a it's a public um, you know it's a public amenity to provide uh, these these greenway connections and ways for folks to to get around other than having to drive. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. All right, the next person that signed up is um, John Amos. Yes, I'd like to respond to some of the. Uh, comments or questions about traffic and to the extent that we provide information uh, where we've where we've gotten that from. Uh, to start with, we pulled out a map and we drew the area that um, uh, or <clears throat> looked at the area uh, you know, for which um, residents in that area would would be closest to our entrance and determined that it was about fifteen thousand people. 
to the north of us along up Carmel Road, up Sharon and um, Quail Hollow. Or, or, and we, um, we did a demographic study within a mile or so, it's 10,000 people. You go up a little further to Fairview, it's 15,000 people. All those people currently, to the extent that they access the Greenway, have to go to the, go to the parking lots uh, south of 51, which means they're driving by the Green Ray Road entrance. And traffic flows like water, except it's not guided by gravity, it's by, guided by convenience. And I think it's reasonable to assume a certain number of people, and it can be pretty significant, are gonna decide that the easiest and most convenient place to access the Greenway is at the end of Greenway Road. And you add that to the thousand cars a day that come and go to Country Day, and that's thousand cars, 2000 round trips, plus neighborhood traffic, and you have a complete mess. And when those people park on our streets, which they will, they're narrow streets, and it's not just Green Ray Road, it's all the streets, and cars parked on both sides, turn the street into one that's impassable for big vehicles, including fire trucks. And since we don't have sidewalks, um, if you're gonna walk down the street to see a neighbor or um, push your kids in a baby carriage, you need to do it in the street. So the parking and traffic impact is significant. There's no way to control it. And the parks department in evaluating their alternatives needs to include on their list of things to evaluate the impact on the neighborhood and I don't think that's been done thoroughly, at least up to this point, to the extent that the Parks Department is now looking at those things and evaluating them properly. I applaud them, and, um, and, um, but I believe that's a necessary component uh, when you, de when you uh, design any Greenway entrance. Thank you, John. All right, up next, um, Barry and Carrie Ozer. Yeah, we um, we just want to say we've lived in two different neighborhoods in the Charlotte area that had access to the Greenway. We loved it. One of the houses we owned, the uh, trail went right behind our house. We never had any issues. Um, we lived off of William Harry Court over there by uh, all the private schools, never had any issues. And so, um, you know, I'm not so sure that the, all the facts are out about traffic and crime and those sort of issues. Um, and <clears throat> I think that there's an unneed uh, spreading of fear in the neighborhood. At the same time, um, we do need a sidewalk. I think a sidewalk would be great. And we certainly didn't um, indicate to anybody that, or sign that petition that's going around. So. I don't know how our names got put onto that thing, but um, I'd appreciate our names being taken on off of it. Thanks, Barry. Um, next is John Lovey. John, you may need to unmute if you're still on. You are correct. Um, sorry. Thank you. Uh, it's John Luby. I live on Bentway Drive um, and I'm all for greenways. Uh, I ride a bike and walk, but I do think having the entrance cross on Greenway on the Green, green Ray, and I also think it's very difficult having Greenway and Green Ray, um, is going to present some problems for us. I think they're probably some better solutions. Uh, one would be to connect from Trader Joe's up Ray Road and come around and come down Colony where you have bike lanes and sidewalks. And that way you would be skipping Carmel Country Club. I know the plan calls for the Greenway, Greenway to pass through the club, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I know. Uh, John Schultz is probably on this call and would probably let you know how Carmel feels about that. But um, I, I think there are other alternatives to extending the Greenway. And I'd like to donate the rest of my time to the head of schools for Country Day. I'm not sure what he's going to say, but I'm sure he knows a lot about what we're talking about. Thank you. 
Thanks, John. He was next on my list. Um, the gentleman who spoke earlier from the school, would you like to speak? So, so I'm happy to speak. And um, <clears throat> to be clear, I'm Mark Reed. I'm the head of school uh, at Country Day. I've been the head of school for 12 years. And the concerns that I have are, are really twofold. One, it is around uh, security. We have found um, <clears throat> spent casings around campus. We have had police lockdowns. Um, <clears throat> sorry about my voice. We've had police lockdowns for, um, for, uh, for an assailant on, on the property near campus. And so first and foremost, my concern is with uh, the safety and security of our students. Uh, people can write in the chat all they want about not finding police reports. I can tell you what we've experienced with lockdowns um, <clears throat> on campus. Um, beyond that, I will tell you, somebody said that in the chat also, there's no evidence that, that the road is not wide enough for emergency vehicles. Having had fire trucks and ambulances down on that campus, I can tell you what those drivers have said to me. Those drivers have said, if people were parked on the sidewalk, on the road, because there is no sidewalk there, if they were parked on the road, it would be extremely difficult for an emergency vehicle to get to campus should there be an emergency. And those are the two points I want to bring up. And they're, they're basically centered on students and the care of our students and the care of the community that supports our students. And I can keep that as simple as need be. And I certainly, I'm certainly happy to answer questions. We have uh, over 525 students that are dropped off there daily um, and that are picked up daily in the afternoon. And that does not include any athletic contests. That does not include any nights where there are concerts or where there are, where there are activities that take place on a typical middle school campus around anywhere in the country. I mean, those, those events require a whole nother level. We have to park student, we have to park parents on the athletic field when we have an event so that we don't use the road to be both respectful of our neighbors and to allow for emergency vehicles to get through. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Sure. Happy to, to, to speak up. Mm -hmm. All right. I believe that was everyone who actually um, reached out to speak, um, unless I missed anyone. Um, I'm going to go through a couple more questions and continue to, to post if you do want to speak. I will sure. say, you know, we talked a good bit about uh, a crime there. Um, there is a CMPD officer on the call. Um, he said he doesn't necessarily need to speak, but he did provide his email address if you would like to, and I'm copying it in the chat now, if you'd like to reach out to him with any um, crime related questions. Um, that's Brian. And, and Brian, thank you for joining us tonight. Okay, um, my next question is, um, is there any thought of expanding parking at Trader Joe's? I use it regularly and more parking would be welcome there. Uh, not associated with this particular project. Um, and, and part of the, the difficulty there is the difficulty that we run into without, uh, in terms of making the parking area that we are planning for this project is, is the amount of property that we have that isn't impacted by the floodplain. Um, if you're familiar with that, it kind of sits up pretty high at road grade. And then once you get down, you know, the creek is, is, is pretty far down. So we don't currently have um, funding to do any kind of parking expansion in that area. Uh, but that's something that we will definitely consider uh, moving forward. We know that that is one of the, if not the busiest parking areas that we have associated with our greenway system. Um, okay, um, this kind of speaks to process, but um, someone mentioned that this has been promised for years and approved in um, previous Mecklenburg County CIPs. They asked the question, why is it taking so long to build? Yeah, so, um, I believe, I can't remember, Katie, when, which master plan this particular section showed up in initially, but it was probably 20 years ago or so. Um, so we are able to move forward with construction of a project once it's a funded project, part of our capital improvement plan. Um, currently, we run on five-year increments for those plans. Um, and so uh, now that it is an active and funded project, um, some of the issues that are, are, are slowing us down on this particular project and, and also slow us down on other Greenway projects are the acquisition of land, whether we're, you know, purchasing that fee simple or obtaining an easement over a piece of property for a trail, 
um, those can take years uh, to hammer out. Um, one such uh, case that I recall, the, the longest one that I know of, was on a section of McAlpine Creek Greenway from Sardis Road to Providence Road, a section that we just completed several months back. And um, that was uh, about 10 years in the making in getting the easements that we needed uh, for that trail. Another thing that slowed us down a little bit was uh, the recession in 2009. We had uh, just approved a, a large bond package for a number of greenway projects and park projects for that matter. Uh, but we were unable to, um, to sell those bonds and realize those dollars uh, because of the recession. And so we had a, a four to five year period where we weren't able to, to build any new projects. I think we had a handful of projects that were already underway and too far down the road to not move forward with, but uh, we were unable to move forward with those. And so uh, we've been trying to, uh, to make up for lost time over the last few years. Uh, the additional five projects that we talked about a little bit earlier as part of the accelerated greenway plan are, are helping uh, for sure. But um, yeah, we, we, we hear you loud and clear in terms of not being able to do these fast enough. Um, okay, uh, there are some additional comments, but I'm, I'm trying to go just for the questions. If the if the connection to Green Ray happens, is there a way to designate on the map or website that there isn't any parking allowed on the road or near the access point? Yeah, so on our on our maps and on our website, we have a, a kind of a clear designation. Uh, it's it, it's a big circle with a P in it for our public parking areas. And we only show those in those public lots like the one that we've looked at on Johnson Road that exists and the one that we have planned on Highway 51. Um, we have had incidents in, in some fairly recently of uh, similar concerns where we've added additional signage at the entrance to the Greenway um, that states uh, Greenway parking is not allowed on the road here. And we actually have a little map that shows where the closest uh, public parking area is, and that's a section of Briar Creek Greenway off of Randolph Road at the, at the Mint Museum there. I'm going through some of the questions on my phone too. Some people were texting questions. Um, sure. Um, and I think this may have been resolved, but I'll repeat it just in case it wasn't. Um, did I understand you to say that the parking lot is not in the contemplated plan for the access point at Greenway Road and that parking on street um, is not an option. Uh, we haven't explored an on-street parking scenario on Green Green Ray um, simply because we don't want to invite uh, additional traffic down there to park. You know, if we were providing parking down there, then people are going to park uh, down there. Um, so we're a little apprehensive to do that. Uh, we do have within the within the scope of the project, the parking area that David pointed out along Highway 51, uh, if that was the other part of that question. Okay, um, another question that came in text, um, what legal action does a neighborhood actually have to protest or dispute the project and who ultimately makes the decision on access and route? I, I, am, I am not um, an attorney, so I do not know the legal route to, uh, to do that. Um, I will say, I, I think uh, a number of our elected officials have been contacted directly by residents along the corridor and particularly along Green Ray Road, uh, both on the county side and the city side. We've, we've answered questions as, as park and recreation staff for, uh, for elected officials, both with the city and the county. Any other questions that you see through there? So can, a lot of additional kind of back and forth with some of the folks in the chat. Sure, sure. Um, I'm not seeing any additional um, specific questions unless I've missed them. Um, okay. Did did I miss anything important? Um, hold on, here's a question. Uh, will a bicycle lane be built into Carmel to make it easier to access Rider or Green Ray via bicycle? Uh, that is a great question. And so uh, I, do not recall if Carmel is a, a city maintained road or a state maintained road. But what we would have to do there uh, would be to work with whichever Department of Transportation kind of oversees the maintenance and operation of that road. 
and work with them on um, appropriate improvements along that stretch. Um, I believe Carmel in that section is signed at 45 miles per hour. I could be wrong. Um, if it is, then we would most likely have to have a wide sidewalk uh, along there, not a bike lane. Uh, I don't believe that we have many bike lanes on roads where speed limits are above 35. Thanks, Bert. Um, another new question is, why no entrance to Ray Woods, which is on the opposite side of the creek? Is that on, which one is that? Remind me. Um, that's the one um, on the southeast side of the creek um, up on the section closest to Green Ray. And that was initially studied, um, but we were unable to acquire the property um, to make that connection. Okay, all right, thank you. Um, another question is, what is the county's record on um, usurping private property for greenways? Uh, I, I don't I don't really know how to answer that question. Um, Lee, I don't know if you've had any experience with that or uh, or not. I, this is I don't know if I can speak to specifically what has sure. been the county's record, particularly using the term usurping. Uh, whenever we get a county property, we use, either negotiate through an easement. Uh, through a fee simple purchase or through a lease. It's usually not a contentious process. So the rest um, that I'm reading are, are more comment based and some of it back and forth. Um, are there any additional questions? Katie, can I offer one more thought? For sure, go ahead. Uh, certainly two things. One, I'm certainly a supporter of the city and the greenways and and this particular one is a real challenge for the for the school. But I, I do want to say first and foremost, I do support greenways and have always supported them. But in this particular case, um, I have concerns and, and someone in the chat mentioned riding bikes down there. I would tell you that during carpool, uh, we, we have actually told families, we, we discourage students from riding bikes to school. And a middle school age is really a perfect age for kids to ride bikes to school and be healthy. And we have discouraged that because there A, there's no bike lanes, B, their sidewalks don't run contiguous down there. And we absolutely don't want students riding on a narrow road with traffic. Um, in that in that rain in, in that area and so I, I will say those are those are real valid points you know when there's no traffic on that road sure a bike can get up and down there without a problem i will say the turn that turns right down before country day can feel a lot like a blind a blind turn in particular if somebody is having their their you know weekly or monthly um, maintenance done on their yard, it is really difficult to see around the corner. And if somebody's on a bicycle, they're, they're, they really are uh, putting themselves at risk because it's not, a, it, there's no bike lane there. And I, I'm just offering thoughts around, again, safety and security. Sure. Thank you, Mark. Sure. All right, I had one that I think I missed earlier in text. Um, okay. The, the, and it's related to the school. The school country day presents an additional security risk with the greenway running behind what is the proposed proposal to address uh, this additional security risk if the plan is to move forward with the green ray plan. Uh, is that assuming that the greenway presents an, a, a security risk? I assume. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, uh, from a security standpoint, you know, we, we typically deal with CMPD, you know, if and when there, there are issues. Um, if we have uh, ongoing issues, uh, which are, are quite rare, um, you know, we'll work with CMPD to increase patrols within that area in uh, very few cases, but in some cases we've used a, a private security firm 
um, if we've had you know, particular issues in, in one area or another. We do have schools along our Greenway trails and in some of our existing Greenway trails and, and, and I don't know that we've had any, any major security concerns there. Uh, that's not to say that that security concerns don't exist. I think I think Mark um, very eloquently shared kind of his concerns when it comes to that. Okay, um, we got some other new questions. Any chance of approaching Ray Woods again after the Greenway is built? Uh, after it's built, I, I would say most likely not. Um, when we have funding for a greenway and the connections associated with it, um, that's when we need to try to make the connections that we can. Uh, once a project is complete, um, there's typically no funding remaining um, to do any additional work there. Um, we've had issues in the in the recent past where um, you know we've worked with communities we weren't able to get a connection made. Um, the, the greenway project was completed. And we've had some um, some requests for uh, additional access points to be made there, and, and we're unable to fulfill that at this point. One, from a funding standpoint, and two, constructability standpoint, we'd have to go in and and, and close green greenway trail in order to go in and make those connections. So it, it, it's quite a bit more challenging to do after the fact. Um, okay, there was also a question. Can you run the trail up through the power lines and over to Colony Road? Hey, Bart, I was going to add something to what you just said. Again, sure. um, this is Iona Thomas, and we design greenways all around the state. Um, one of the most common things that we find in communities that we work with a lot is um, we do have folks who um, are communities or neighborhoods that are initially not supportive of a connection. And because of the public process, the connection isn't made. Um, and then the uh, municipality is often faced with huge demand to make the connection because once the facility is on the ground, people want to connect to it. So I'm just sharing that as an anecdotal thing that we see all the time that we get pushback. We don't do the connection and then the facility gets on the ground and everybody wants to be able to connect to it and so just giving that as something that that we do see in this uh in this kind of scenario all right katie are you seeing any more questions roll in um, so I was just going to go back to that one about the, the power lines. I'm not totally sure what, what the person was asking and which power lines they're specifically referring to, but I will say that um, typically with power line corridors, um, the underlying, the utility company has an easement over private property. So even if there's no development under those power lines, it would still require um, the same amount of property acquisition uh, to acquire any land for, for, for our trail to go in, in those spaces typically. And then um, I think there are some more, there's more in the chat that happened while we were, okay. So there's one um, related to, I think crime prevention possibly, um, for children who are 12 to 15 years old, do we wait for an incident to happen before we bring in the police? Um, I guess the answer there is it would be no, uh, but um, you know, we haven't had incidents in other Greenway trails that we have that are adjacent to schools that have presented additional security threats. Um, but um, we can't guarantee that it's not either, to be honest. Okay, I think we, um, I think we've hit most of the questions. And if we sure. haven't, um, feel free to continue. You all have my cell phone number now. Um, feel free to text me or um, write on the public input page. And I think Katie's going to copy that link back into the chat. Um, and that is, is is where you register for the meeting. And so that'll be that page will be up for a while, and you can check back in. And um, we'll try to post updates about the project as as we as we have them. Um, and with that, I'll turn it back over to Bert. 
Sure. And so now you have my cell phone number too. It's it's on this slide. Um, as I said early, uh, thank you so much for for attending this evening. Um, we have recorded this. We will post uh, post this on YouTube and and copy the link, uh, as well as a PDF of the slide deck that we shared tonight on the public input website. I, I imagine that either Katie Daughtry or Katie Lloyd is adding dropping a link to that website um, for you. Uh, if you haven't gotten to that yet. Um, and then uh, one final uh, item in closing, uh, I mentioned earlier that we're kind of in the process or starting to wrap up the process of our, our current uh, master plan update, which is uh, MEC Playbook. And so uh, another link that will be, post be posted is uh, mechplaybook.com, which is our project website for that. Uh, if you'd like to go in and, and look at We've got a number of videos from our, our meetings and our virtual meetings over the last uh, year and several months, um, as well as slide decks from those. And again, if you have any, any questions about that process, you can, you can reach out to me directly, either email or call or text, and uh, I'd be happy to, to get back in, in touch with you. So with that, Lee, I don't know if you've got any closing words or, uh, or Dina, but uh, I'll say thank you so much for, uh, for attending tonight and, um, and have, a good, uh, have a good evening and a happy holidays. Thanks everyone for coming out and, sh and uh, voicing your opinions.